Hello everyone and welcome back to the revisionary videos on capital budgeting and this is the second part of capital budgeting revision classes. Now in the previous class we have ended the point with the understanding of net present value and here we have a follow up point that is concept of internal rate of return. So what did you learn in the previous part? What is the meaning of NPV? How is NPV determined? and most importantly the implications of NPV. Let me remind you that when we talk about implications of NPV we have seen one thing when will you get a positive NPV and what is the indication of that. A positive NPV is obtained when a project is capable of generating a rate of return which is higher than what is expected by the company. Assume that the company is expecting a rate of return of 15 percent per annum and the project is giving positive NPV that means project is capable of generating a rate of return greater than 15 percent that rate of return is internal rate of return in simple words. Therefore there are lots of points that you need to understand with respect to internal rate of return the meaning of internal rate of return how is internal rate of return computed the implications of internal rate of return all these concepts you need to understand very well. And therefore one video which I would emphasize all of you to watch is the one which I have given as a link in the description below this video itself that is all about interlink of concepts between NPV and IRR. So friends when we are talking about internal rate of return how to compute internal rate of return I am not talking about that in this video for that you can refer that detailed video. Now what we do right now is we will be taking some important notes over here and that will be conveying the meaning of IRR that is internal rate of return in the first order. This is the rate of return which indicates capacity of a project to generate cash flows. If internal rate of return is considered as discounting rate the resulting NPV will be zero. Please refer question number four and question number five from regular class videos for developing complete understanding about NPV and IRR concepts and friends this is the video for which the link I have already given in the description below. Let us move ahead and now talk about important notes with respect to this. IRR indicates the return generating capacity of a project cutoff rate or discounting rate indicates the expected rate of return of the investor. If the discounting rate is greater than IRR the resulting NPV will obviously be negative. This is because the investor expects a rate of return higher than the rate of return that can be generated by the project. Now let me explain you this point first of all. Imagine that a project has a capacity to generate rate of return of 15 percent per annum and your expectation in that investment is 18 percent per annum. So what will happen? project is capable of providing a rate of return of 15 percent you are expecting more than that as a result the NPV will be negative. So understand one thing there will always be a comparison between the discounting rate and IRR. So when discounting rate is greater than IRR the resulting NPV will obviously be negative and that is the point when you should not accept such a project such investment proposal should never be accepted because it will indicate a loss it will indicate a negative NPV and what is the direct hint of a negative NPV that is when the discounting rate is greater than the IRR. What will happen if the discounting rate is same as IRR means whatever rate of return project is generating same rate of return you are expecting the resulting NPV will be zero because there is no surplus that is arising in that project correct. In that case project is acceptable and when discounting rate is lower than the IRR obviously project is going to provide positive NPV and that is the time you are definitely going to accept the proposal. Now when should you accept or reject any proposal on the basis of IRR criteria let us be clear about it when discounting rate is greater than IRR reject the project when discounting rate is less than or equal to the IRR definitely accept the project. I told you one thing very clearly if discounting rate and IRR are same NPV will be zero. If discounting rate is less and IRR is greater NPV will be positive which are indications of situations when the project is acceptable. So let me not 
waste any further time for you let me take you through the other points of these important notes when discounting rate is greater than irr the project is rejected if the discounting rate is lower than irr it will obviously result into a positive npv this is because the investor expects a rate of return lower than the rate of return that can be generated by the project when discounting rate is lower than irr the project is accepted all these points i have just explained to you already now the next point when the discounting rate is equal to irr the resulting npv will be zero this is because the investor expects exactly same rate of return that is capacity of the project to generate even in this scenario the project is accepted because the investor still earns the expected rate of return now this eighth point something very very important the underlying assumption with npv method is that all the cash flows obtained from the project are reinvested at the same discounting rate through which npv was determined if such cash inflows are not reinvested the outcome of npv will not be as desired now friends in this eighth point what is given many students always keep themselves in a confused state when it comes to a reinvestment assumption involved in capital budgeting and that is why what i have done i have separately given a concept video on this particular point that is reinvestment assumptions involved in capital budgeting so this eighth point if it is not sounding clear to you without failure watch my video on reinvestment assumptions in capital budgeting because the flaws in that reinvestment assumptions with respect to irr will actually lead to the concept of modified irr and once again i am telling you the concept of reinvestment of the cash flows in capital budgeting what kind of assumptions are taken there will be assumptions under npv method there will be assumptions under irr method irr assumptions are not correct assumptions and that is why there will always be an error in irr and that is why we have to modify the irr to bring in line the correct assumptions with correct computations and that is why concept of modified irr is directly linked with this eighth point about reinvestment assumptions involved in capital budgeting all those videos links i have given to you below the description without fail watch those videos carefully let me now take you ahead over here and next point that we talk about is concept of discounted payback period now let us understand what exactly is the concept of discounted payback period you have already understood what is a payback period correct so if i have invested a sum of rupees 10 lakhs in a project and the project is giving me cash inflows of rupees 2 lakhs every year then it will take 5 years time for me to get back my money but do you notice one thing i am getting back that same 10 lakhs after 5 years which i have invested i have just got back my 10 lakhs of initial investment i am making investments primarily to generate some rate of return for myself correct and therefore i am not just happy getting back only and only the amount of initial investment i want my investment back with returns so if my expected rate of return is 15% per annum all the money that i have initially invested i want that money back along with annual rate of return of 15% per annum how long that would take that period of time which will be required to get back the initial investment with interest or with some rate of return that payback period is called discounted payback period now this is the basic concept now regarding computation of discounted payback period the concept is again very simple convert all the cash flow amounts into discounted cash flows discounted cash flows are nothing but the present value of cash flows based on the discounted cash flows when you compute the payback period you will be getting the discounted payback period so from calculation procedure point of view suppose a project has life of 10 years i will write year 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 i will plot all the individual cash flows of each year then i will first convert these cash flows into discounted cash flows that is the present value of these cash flows then start taking the cumulative values of these discounted cash flows cumulative dcf when that cumulative dcf is matching with my initial investment or crossing that amount then in that particular year we get an indication of payback period this payback period 
will be discounted payback period and the computation further will be done exactly as you have learned earlier and again yes for computing and practicing questions on discounted payback period the video link I have again given in this description of the same video so you can definitely watch that video if required. Let me give you some notes on discounted payback period in the first order over here. So what you do is under the heading discounted payback period you should understand it is the period over which the initial investment is recovered with interest. Discounted payback period can be determined by accumulating the discounted annual cash flows until initial investment is recovered. Please refer question number 8, question number 9 and question number 10 from regular class videos for developing complete understanding about this concept. Let us move ahead and now talk about the next point that will be concept of ARR that is average rate of return. Now this is uh, hardly asked in exams but you cannot skip that you need to understand this as well. Average rate of return based on initial investment is computed by simply taking average profit after tax divided by initial investment into 100. Into 100 why because we want the result in terms of percentage. If you want to compute average rate of return based on average investment the numerator remains same that is average profit after tax but in the denominator you will be taking the average investment and average profit after tax divided by average investment into 100 will give you the required calculation. Now what is average investment? It is simply the average of the simple average of two figures that will be initial investment and the scrap value. So initial investment plus scrap value divided by 2 will give you the amount of average investment. 